Okay, if we're ready to begin, I'm here. I'm Tom Fitton. I'm president of Judicial Watch, and we're here to announce the filing on behalf of uh, voters of Maryland of a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of Maryland's gerrymandered congressional district maps. The lawsuit was filed on behalf, again, of voters in each of Maryland's congressional districts. Plaintiffs in the new lawsuit include Maryland Delegate Neil Parrott, Maryland Delegate Matt Morgan, and former Maryland legislator and gubernatorial candidate Ambassador Ellen Sowerbury. The lawsuit alleges that the Maryland maps were drawn in a way that violates the U.S. Constitution, especially the provision that the House of Representatives shall be composed of members chosen every second year by the people of the several states. And this is Article 1, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. Judicial Watch filed the lawsuit in the United States District Court for the District of Maryland against Maryland State Administrator of Elections and the Chair of the State Board of Elections. The lawsuit asked the court, among other relief, to declare the Maryland maps unlawful and require Maryland to redraw the maps. The lawsuit challenges a congressional districting plan signed into law by then Governor Martin O'Malley in October of 2011. The lawsuit alleges that the Maryland's congressional district, plan, uh, district map is the most distorted and confused in the country. Uh, in 2011, the, the 2011 districting plan, excuse me, uprooted millions of Amer Maryland millions of Marylanders from their previous congressional districts. And this is what the lawsuit says in that regard. The congressional districting plan greatly reconfigured Maryland's congressional districts. Specifically, the new plan removed approximately 1.6 million Marylanders from their previous congressional districts and placed them in a different district. In total, 27% of all Marylanders were removed from their previous congressional district and placed in a different congressional district. Maryland's gerrymander produces, quote, split counties, county fragments, and split precincts, resulting in the arbitrary political fragmentation of the state. Our lawsuit argues that the plan harms Republicans, Democrats, and independent voters. And again, quoting from the lawsuit, Maryland's gerrymander harms all of Maryland's voters, regardless of their party preferences or how they would vote in a particular election by giving state legislatures, legislators the power to make choices regarding the state's congressional delegation that only the voters should make, in addition to the general harm inflicted when legislators intrude on powers that should be reserved to voters, Maryland's gerrymander inflicts particular harm on partisan and nonpartisan voters of every description. And gerrymandering disadvantages entire legislative districts as well, because voters do not choose where to live so as to suit the purposes of legislators trying to draw gerrymandered districts, they must distend, shrink, and generally distort district boundaries to create districts that contain the mix of voters that best achieves their partisan goals. Exceedingly non-compact districts confuse voters regarding such basic matters as which district they reside in, who represents them, who is running for office in their district, and where they go to vote. The lawsuit prevents, uh, presents a judicially manageable remedy necessary to resolve these clear cases as we see in Maryland of political gerrymandering. And specifically, we reference the Polsby Popper Scale, which is one of the most widely used measures of electoral district compactness. That scale is a straightforward application of a mathematically derived compactness measure to congressional districts, which can be used by as a judicially manageable, discernible, and non-arbitrary standard with which to measure and deter excessive partisan gerrymandering. Maryland's congressional districts have an average Polsby Popper compactness scale of 11.3. This is the lowest or the worst average of a compactness score for congressional districts of any state in the nation. So to be clear, Maryland is the worst when it comes to gerrymandered districts. Judicial Watch's lawsuit is unique in proposing this uh, single objective compactness measure to determine whether states are engaged in, unconsti in unconstitutional gerrymandering. And Robert Popper, who's joining me here today, is co-creator of the, this uh, Polsby Popper scale. He's also the lead Judicial Watch attorney in this lawsuit and directs the organization's uh, uh, election integrity project for Judicial Watch, obviously. You know, critics of all uh, critics of this gerrymandered uh, Maryland map uh, include uh, 
all over uh, the ideological spectrum, including the Washington Post, which editorialized, the map drafted under Martin O'Malley's watchful eye mocks the idea that voting districts should become packed or easily navigable. The eight districts respect neither jurisdictional boundaries nor communities of interest. To protect incumbents and four partisan advantage, the map has been sliced, diced, shuffled, and shattered, making districts resemble studies in cubism. You know, in Maryland, politicians have picked their voters, which is unconstitutional. Maryland's gerrymandered congressional district map is a national embarrassment and harms both Democrat and Republican voters. The court should require Maryland to go back and draw district max, maps that respect Maryland voters and don't make a mockery of uh, common sense in the rule of law. And uh, you'll see here uh, on my left uh, the uh, actual congressional district maps and currently in place in Maryland. And you can see uh, you have uh, certain districts that uh, are what, well over 300, was it 300 miles in length. Baltimore is torn apart by this district map, and you have a congr congressman representing Montgomery County in far north Maryland. Obviously, communities have been torn apart by this map, and it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, we represent, uh, present uh, uh, an alternative map here. It doesn't necessarily have to be the final map, but this is the way a congressional map, using a sensible compactness measure and uh, one that respects the communities of Maryland, this is how that map would look like, or a variation of this. This is a map that has contempt for the Maryland voters, contempt for the Constitution, and uh, this is, if this is what the politicians think they can get away with in Maryland, uh, we hope the courts remind them otherwise. Uh, joining me up here uh, also, I should note, is, as I said, Robert Popper, who is our uh, lead attorney on this matter, and uh, Delegate Neil Parrott, who is uh, activism on this issue has been tremendous. He's um, uh, been uh, uh, talking about this and, and, and doing other legal action about this congressional uh, district map in Maryland for some time. He'll make some remarks in a bit. Also joining us is uh, Chris Fidelli and Lauren Burke, who are Judicial Watch attorneys also on this case. So we consider this case to be a historic case uh, because it, for the first time, prevent, presents courts with an opportunity to uh, protect the voters and their constitutional rights in a way uh, that is manageable by the courts and uh, that is going to lead to better representation for voters in Maryland if we succeed. So uh, with that end, I will uh, turn the podium over to uh, Mr. Popper, who is, uh, as I said, a, a Judicial Watch attorney, uh, one of the leading attorneys on election law in the country. Uh, he directs uh, Judicial Watch's Election Integrity Project. He's a former attorney with the Justice Department under uh, uh, many administrations, including this, uh, the President Obama's administration, where he most recently served as uh, Deputy Chief of the Voting Section of the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department. So a key attorney, at least from the federal government's perspective, in enforcing the rule of law on election integrity and voting rights. So uh, Mr. Popper, Bob. I'd like to make just a few points about gerrymandering and about our lawsuit. <clears throat> I think that the most obvious point that everyone gets is that gerrymandering is cheating. It is a way to win elections without having to convince voters to elect you. They do this by changing the district lines in a way that helps their party. It is inherently anti-democratic for that reason. You cannot have gerrymandering and claim to be a full-fledged democracy. Now, the United States and people in the United States are very prone to lecture the world on democratic practice and to hold them to account when we don't believe that they're meeting our standards. And yet, we tolerate those districts and this practice. And I think it should change, and that's one of the reasons we're suing. Now, Maryland's district plan is, as Tom pointed out, the most gerrymandered district plan in the country. And one of the worst districts in the country is District 3, which I would ask you to, uh, to try to follow with your eye. It is all the yellow parts of the map to my left. Um, it, is, it involves hundreds of miles of district line. 
it is in several places less than a mile wide. In one place up near Baltimore, it is 200 yards wide. And yet if District 3 were unwound and the perimeter line were stretched, it would reach to Boston. And yet that district line encloses an area less than that of the area of Montgomery County, significantly less. So this is one of the worst gerrymanders. Gerrymandering has very few defenders. Everyone seems to be against it when they're talking about it. Um, all partisan groups, all parties, and yet it survives. In fact, um, Mike Bush, Speaker of the House of Delegates, criticized the map that he drew. He was one of the committee members who drew this map. And he said that they had gone too far and that they had, in his words, could have, I'm sorry, could have done a better job of keeping communities together, which has to be one of the great understatements of the past couple of years. Um, if you look at this district map, those districts are not places. They are not communities. They are, in fact, evidence of politicians shredding and destroying communities for partisan gain. And that is extremely unfortunate. Now, if everyone criticizes gerrymandering, why does it persist? Well, for politicians, there's an advantage to it. It helps them stay in office, and so it doesn't go away. And as far as the courts are concerned, they continue to allow gerrymandering because there has been no manageable standard by which to measure the practice. And that's what our lawsuit hopes to address. Um, our lawsuit proposes a manageable test for gerrymandering because in order to gerrymander, you have to do one thing. People don't arrange themselves to suit people who draw district maps, so you have to draw those crazy districts. You have to include people, you have to exclude people based on how you think they're going to vote. And so our lawsuit maintains that a constitutional districting scheme would require district compactness. Now, there are several equally valid mathematical ways to measure compactness. We used one of those ways to draw this district map. This is not the one we propose as an alternative. This is illustrative. And the thing about this map is that all those districts have equal population. All those districts comply with every applicable federal rule about districting. But they define places. If you look at that map, you can see that someone who is from one of those districts will know where they're from. They will understand intuitively that those are communities. And in fact, our map does divides fewer counties than Maryland's current district plan. Our map divides many fewer voter precincts than Maryland's current district map. And many maps could be drawn that are just as good. Um, I think that it is important for people to talk about gerrymandering in a different way than they have. Gerrymandering at root is not something that Democrats do to Republicans or that Republicans do to Democrats. That's one of the effects and that's what everyone talks about. But at root, gerrymandering is something that legislators do to voters. It is something that legislators do to acquire for themselves the power to select who sits in the legislature. And they acquire that power at voters' expense. That's why we're not suing on behalf of any one party or one group of partisans. We're not pleading in our complaint that our plaintiffs are members of one party or another. We're suing on behalf of all Maryland voters because all Maryland voters are harmed by this practice. It's time to end gerrymandering and to return the power to the voter to select legislators. And now I'd like to... Uh, Introduce Neil Parrott from the Maryland House of Delegates. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here at Judicial Watch. Thank you for the work that you've done, the good work, and for bringing this case forward. This is an important case. In Maryland, the League of Women Voters and Common Cause both think that this map is appalling. Uh, both sides of the aisle look at this map and say it doesn't make sense. Uh, as was mentioned previously, Speaker Mike Bush even said this map goes too far. If you look at Anne Arundel County, it's been divided into four different congressional districts. I could go to the city of Baltimore and any of the other counties um, that are in the most gerrymandered part and show how, how many districts they've been divided into. It doesn't make sense. It's not good for Maryland. It's not good for voters. It divides the rural community extremely uh, by taking the rural part, what used to be six, and bringing it down to Montgomery County. 
as you can see, really just in an effort to pick up uh, city voters, which dilutes the rural county votes. You know, this map was actually featured in Comedy Central. When the first maps came out, this was the worst map in the entire com country. Comedy Central made this uh, one of their examples of how really we are cheating voters and it doesn't make sense. It needs to be overturned. And I'm very thankful for Judicial Watch taking this case and showing that this clearly is not compact. And we actually have a score that we can look at that the justices can say from this point forward, we need to have compactness as one of the measures of what's an appropriate congressional district. In Maryland, we already have that in the Maryland Constitution, and we applied that to when we draw congressional, well, when we draw redistricting maps at the state level, what's for the state delegate or state senators. It has to be compact, contiguous, it has to respect political boundaries and ge geographical boundaries. This does not do any of those things. Um, of course, they don't have to, the way it's been interpreted, to follow the Maryland Constitution when they put the congressional maps together, but certainly this was not done in this case, and it should be done all around the country, especially when we look at compactness. If we look at one district as an example, there's a gated community. You can't even drive into this community, um, and yet at the end of the community, it, it connects to another part of the state. So basically, if you have a boat, you could probably connect from this district to the other, but that would be the only way to, co to connect on its District 3. Uh, it just shows how th this map simply doesn't make sense. It divides communities. It divides people who would like to vote the same type of way. And again, I'm proud to stand here with Judicial Watch and with the other plaintiffs in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ed, do you have any comments on that? Uh, Chris or uh, Lauren? Um, I, I mean, it, Delegate Parrott, district, it's probably uh, fails on a number of levels, including uh, constitutional issues. Uh, this is about the rights of voters, and this is about whether or not the politicians in Maryland can pick their voters versus the voters getting to pick their congressional uh, uh, members. And uh, uh, we often hear talk in this country of uniting the country and not dividing it. Uh, this is a cynical division of, uh, of Maryland and uh, this is something that doesn't pass constitutional muster. So we're looking forward uh, to this challenge. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, is looking at redistricting issues, is interested in this issue. Uh, so uh, whatever happens, I think uh, this is gonna get national attention. And um, Maryland, to be clear, is not the only state. Uh, but uh, certainly from our perspective, it is the worst state. And it's not uh, because it is governed by Democrats. You can go to other states and find uh, 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 states governed by, Mer uh, by Republicans who have uh, drawn um, equally uh, other unconstitutional districts, but uh, none as bad as this one. So uh, this should serve as a warning bell, a warning shot uh, to other states that will be looking at them as well. So with that being said, unless there are any other uh, comments from um, uh, my colleagues up here and Delegate Barrett, are there any questions uh, from the media in response? Yes. repeat again, but um, how will your strategy in this lawsuit be different than um, prior lawsuits um, that have been tossed out um, that tried to address uh, redistricting in the state? Well, as Bob, as Bob Popper suggested, this is a, this is a di very different legal theory uh, that uh, was not used by the plaintiffs in the other lawsuits that had previously challenged the Mar Maryland uh, district map. Uh, at least one of the other judges in those cases compared this map to a pterodactyl or something like that. Uh, the judge in that case, I think, uh, I recall, said, well, I don't have a way of figuring out this map um, as a judge, uh, and so I can't get involved. And our lawsuit presents a way for the courts to approach this uh, using an analysis that doesn't necessarily uh, require a certain outcome, but gives you a sensible feeling for the way the districts ought to be in terms of compactness. They should when you look at them, you should see a place in the district. You should see a community. You should recognize, hey, that's where I live. Uh, you shouldn't be able, as, as, as opposed to this map, uh, where um, I, I have a feeling even Neil would have to figure out uh, uh, where he would if he lived in District 3. You don't live in District 3, do you? You'd probably have to figure out where you live and then go to the map and then place it in a district. 
Um, and I think the courts have been grasp grappling with the issue, well, how can we do this? Uh, how can we come up with a program or a, uh, a requirement that um, is enforceable, that the courts can apply in a fair manner, uh, that doesn't uh, imply judicial overreach? And they haven't been able to do that uh, with, this, uh, with these questions. And this is not a political question. Uh, this is a straightforward question under a constitutional provision that I don't think has been argued uh, before, which is that we have a right to pick our congressmen. Voters have that right. And this, and this map takes away that right. And uh, this is something that's new for the courts and I think is going to result in a, in a good outcome. I think that covered it. In, uh, in 1986, the Supreme Court enunciated a standard for political gerrymandering. And in 29 years, no one's been able to apply that standard to figure out what the uh, test should be. Um, and I think that that standard has not worked, and we're suggesting a new one. We're suggesting one based on Article One, Section 2, that the people don't get to elect the representative. All the other claims have been partisan-based. In other words, based on classification or the Equal Protection Clause that one group is being injured, we claim that all Maryland voters are injured. And we set out in great detail how that is. Yeah, to be clear, this, uh, as we note in the lawsuit, Majority, even of their own party, if uh, say the uh, option were presented on the ballot, uh, so th this this uh, has a nasty impact on voters of all stripes, and uh, so this is kind of a broad. Uh, the harm here is broad to all voters in Maryland, and that's why we're representing voters, and and uh, to a degree, um, uh, Delegate uh, Parrott is here. Uh, he's here as a voter. Uh, obviously, he has an interest as a delegate and an elected official, but. He goes to the court as a voter, as his co-plaintiffs. And uh, so uh, this is a straightforward application of the rule of law and the Constitution to this abuse of authority uh, uh, by uh, the Maryland legislature and the, and, this, and the governor. Any other questions? Yes. Um, Wait for the microphone, please. So if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, you're, the, this lawsuit is proposing that district compactness be the, the test. Are there any other factors that you think the court should take into account other than district compactness, or is, it, is that what you're focusing on? Well, there are other federal laws. Constitutional or not, uh, but I'll defer to Bob if, if there are other measures associated with this issue beyond the issue of compactness. Yeah. Um, the short answer is no. Um, in all the cases following the 1986 gerrymandering case, um, where an attempt was made to define some sort of amorphous standard about who benefited and what the partisan makeup was, the uh, proposed test failed. Um, gerrymanders were let by. Uh, what we propose is that, uh, you, you know, a different way to look at it is that we say you, you can't really have workable equal population if you don't have compactness. Compactness is a workaround or a circumvention of equal population. And if that's a constitutional requirement, this should be as well. The short answer is no, we don't rely on, don't suggest that the court rely on other, uh, let's call them more uh, amorphous or vague or ill-defined or ambiguous criteria. Any other questions? 
Okay, well, thank you for coming out this afternoon. The uh, lawsuit will be available on Judicial Watch's website at judicialwatch.org. And uh, Bob, could you describe the timing of the filings to come after as a result of our filing today up in? Uh, uh, I, well, that depends considerably upon what uh, the state of Maryland chooses to do. Um, they're going to need to answer the complaint and uh, we expect that they might uh, seek to set a schedule for doing so. And um, th there might be some motion practice along the way, but um, we expect a couple of weeks in which they uh, work out what they would like to ask us to do and what they plan to do. That's up to them. Well, and in the meantime, I think uh, elected officials and, and, and others with uh, an interest in uh, the rule of law of Maryland should make their views known as to where they stand on uh, the constitutionality of this map and whether they think this is an appropriate uh, uh, way to treat the Maryland voters. Uh, to me, this is an abuse of the Maryland voters and uh, the politicians who uh, uh, I would hope the state of Maryland wouldn't spend too much money, uh, waste too much money uh, defending the indefensible here. So I think uh, the legal position of Maryland uh, it would be wonderful if they agreed with us and said Judicial Watch is right, uh, because I think that's the correct outcome. And I, I think uh, Maryland public officials uh, should be uh, uh, held to account uh, for if they are going to fight this tooth and nail in court uh, with taxpayer dollars, which would be a further abuse of the voters uh, who, uh, uh, who they supposedly answer to. So, uh, Neil, do you have any other comments? Nope. Okay, well, thank you very much. Again, uh, on our website at judicialwatch.org uh, for more information, certainly uh, for this lawsuit and as the case progresses. Thank you.